Hello, everyone. Welcome to the latest edition of ADGM Think, our podcast where we invite our financial experts to tell us what they really think. My name is Juana Pichinku. I'm manager in sustainable finance at ADGM and your host today. It is my pleasure to welcome Jennifer Chamas, regional head of sustainable finance and commercial banking at HSBC. Jennifer, welcome to Abu Dhabi Global Market. Thank you. Happy to be here. HSBC is a well-known bank for its efforts to be the leading bank in sustainable finance with ambition plans to prioritize green financing, investment, and the transition to net zero. The transition to net zero is one of the opportunities and challenges to achieving sustainability. Jennifer, can you tell us why and how is HSBC supporting the transition? Thanks. Yeah, happy to. I get that question a lot, as you can imagine. And as a bank, our motivation is threefold. First, we see this as a commercial opportunity. There's 150 trillion or so of financing needed to finance the transition, of which just under 40 is required by the end of this decade. So for us, we definitely see this as a financial opportunity that we want to lean into because it's an op- it's a need that's required across all industries and geographies. The second reason and motivation to act is that we see this as a systemic risk and we want to ensure financial stability of our bank as well as of the markets. And so we feel we have a motivation to act here as well. And thirdly, and most importantly, this is obviously a topic, it's the right thing to do, uh, but also we expect a lot of change to come through with this topic. And we want to be leaning in and leading this change and influencing policies and regulations that are coming. So these are our motivations. How we're doing this is by focusing on our strength. We're focusing on three levers. First is we want to make sure that all of our customers are transitioning, whether they're advanced on their journey of sustainability or whether they're just starting. And we see customers across the spectrum. Here in the region, some of our customers even are advanced and some are uh, just starting on their journey. Um, The second lever and the second way we want to focus on this is by helping the new economy and supporting the new economy. What What we mean by this is supporting the high growth companies that are innovating in the space and providing solutions that are required, the climate techs of this world, the agri techs, but also the new infrastructure and the build that we all need to ensure a net zero world. And finally, as the largest trade bank in the world, we want to ensure that, that supply chains are transforming as well. So a lot of the change and a lot of the emissions actually are happening in supply chains. And we have, feel we have a role to play as well. Thank you, Jennifer. On a personal note, I have to say I am a happy customer of HSBC. And when I actually, when I was looking to, to, to open a bank account here, I actually checked well on the website, your approach to sustainability. Maybe you can tell our listeners how does sustainable finance support corporate sustainability goal? Absolutely. So no matter the financing need, we can support customers along their sustainability, sustainability journey, depending on also what they require from a financing perspective. We typically categorize the sustainable finance products in in really three buckets to make things simpler. We have a use of proceeds bucket, and this is where the financing is dedicated to a green or social project. So if you need to install solar panels, if you have an energy efficiency project, these qualify for green lending. On the social side, if you have social housing that are targeted at at a population that's a minority, that would also qualify as a use of proceed social loan. The second bucket is what we call sustainability linked financing. And this is where uh, we tie sustainability KPIs to the margin of the loan that we extend to the customer. This product really ensures that a customer's sustainability strategy gets embedded within their financial strategy and the financial products that we uh, that we offer them. And the key difference between the first two is that while the use of proceeds product is limited to the financing, green or social, The sustainability linked uh, does not limit the use of proceeds. So it's for any general corporate purposes. And the third product, the third format that we offer, uh, again, has to do with supply chains. And this is where we leverage, we we find that a lot of our customers, the big buyers of this world, they want to influence their suppliers because again, they want to decarbonize their supply chain. And this is what we call sustainable supply chain finance. We tie the performance of the supplier, the ESG performance of the supplier, to the discount margin that they get uh, from the buyer. So these are the three types of products we offer. We've done several deals within the region across all these products, which we're happy to give some examples. Thank you very much. 
I'm glad that you mentioned uh, your products in this uh, in this uh, answer. And earlier in your question, you mentioned regulation. I have to say, um, sustainable finance is a key priority in ADGM uh, for a long-term strategy, but also from a growth uh, vision perspective. We at ADGM have developed the regulation for financial products actually linked to fund portfolios, also bonds and um, and sukups as well. Uh, and also we have ESG disclosure. We have a wide range of uh, you know of uh, uh, key elements that support us in establishing ADGM as a leading hub for sustainable finance, not only in Abu Dhabi and UAE, but beyond. Jennifer, you are the regional head of Middle East, North Africa and Turkey region at HSBC. Uh, can you tell us how has sustainable finance developed in the MENA region? Absolutely. The incorporation of ESG, a consideration into operations of Islamic finance institutions has gained traction over the last few years. So having that combination of sustainable Islamic finance is becoming a, a more, more of a trend than we're seeing. A lot of the institutions that require Islamic finance are also looking at ESG considerations. And in fact, uh, most just about a month ago, we've done a sustainability link loan, Islamic sustainability link loan for a company called De Facto, taking their ESG KPIs into consideration. And for us, it was a critical transaction because we've included Sharia principles into sustainability linked financing. Um, this was a 125 million dual currency multi tranche SLL, and it was the inaugural sustainability linked financing transaction for de facto. We've incorporated a set of performance metrics aligned to the core aspects of their sustainability strategy and to the fashion retail sector. So, again, it took us a while to be able to put that transaction together, but it was critical for both the customer to be able to incorporate two very important um, considerations for them into one structure. Thank you very much. Uh, Jennifer, um, HSBC has launched a sustainable accelerator last year. Uh, tell us about the program, what it achieved and how it is progressing. Absolutely. So this is a, an initiative that I'm very proud of. Um, so. As a bank, we, we obviously want to make sure that our customers are transitioning. Like I said, we see it as a risk and as an opportunity. Uh, but a lot of our customers in the region did not know what was the first step to take and they needed some guidance. So last year, we launched the Sustainable Business Accelerator in the AIM. It was a six month program by the end of which corporates would have a foundational sustainability strategy. And actually, we had our closing ceremony at COP28. Uh, and we're very pleased with the program participation and, and how our customers lean into it. Uh, but essentially what we're offering, we're partnering with a company called Diginex. They are an end-to-end -end reporting uh, tool, digital re reporting tool, and they've guided our customers through why is ESG important, uh, how to do ESG reporting, what is materiality, how to conduct a materiality assessment, and how to start to assess and measure your ESG performance. This year, we're launching the program again at the beginning of June, and we're very excited about it. We've used some feedback from our customers from last year and essentially enhanced the program to make sure that it's more sector specific. And also we've narrowed down the scope of the program to make sure that it's uh, easier kind of to get to at the end and more tangible with tangible results. So we're very pleased with this program because um, as customers take their first step, we're then able to engage with them a lot more on this agenda from a strategic perspective. Uh, and we're, you know, we're hoping to continue to support our customers along their journey. It, it sounds like you're definitely helping your customer improve their capacity building in the ESG sector. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it, it's a very daunting topic. There's a lot to cover, but actually when it comes down to it, and if you take that first step, it becomes much simpler. And once you understand what you're trying to do and you take that first step, you, you know, once you start something, you can actually make progress. Um, so we're here to you know, help that our customers take their first step to, to become more confident and more aware of what is sustainability. Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer, I think you would agree with me if I say that our conversation today is incomplete if we do not mention COP28. Uh, it's been around six months since COP28 took place in December. Uh, what progress have you um, observed since COP28? Absolutely. So the momentum of COP28, I would say, is still there. Um, I think everybody at the beginning of the year, to be candid, was a bit exhausted from December, but we're definitely seeing the uptick. Um, we've seen a lot more customers come to the market with sustainable finance transactions. The awareness is there. Um, when I meet with customers today, it's no longer, should I do this? It's how do I get this done, right? So the, the progress is real and is tangible. 
Um, from a UAE perspective, we also see a strengthened dialogue with regulators, um, uh, you know, and, and at the country level, there's a lot of initiatives that are very positive. I think we, we still have a big uh, way to go. We have, we have a lot of work to get done. Um, you know, things like uh, green buildings were very important for, for this economy and the construction sector. We still need to kind of align our standards and make sure that we're all building in the right way and building sustainably for the future. So um, a lot has changed, I would say, since COP28. Um, you know, for us, we're very positive about what the UAE is doing and the region as a whole. And we want to continue to support whether it's the regulators uh, from a public sector perspective or the private sector and our corporate customers on their sustainability journey. Thank you very much, Jennifer, for joining us today at Abu Dhabi Global Market and for the very insightful conversation on sustainable finance. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you.